I have an announcement. An audio version of the After Dark podcast can now be found on podcasting apps. Not all of them have been approved so far. Some of the apps take longer to do this than others. But I can say, go search for it. If it's there, subscribe. If it's not there, try again in a few days, a week. It'll definitely be there. They're all uploading now. Oh my god, I can't believe we've done it. Thanks for all your support. didn't expect to be making another Dark Theory video this quickly, but judging by the response from the last one, and a lot of people in the comments disagreeing with me, it's made me reflect further and my theory has grown. So I want to correct a few points, as well as expand on a few points from my previous video. If you're someone who really, really didn't agree with my last video, well, this video probably isn't for you either. I'm not changing the theory completely, I'm just going to change a few points. I actually think I've hit on something that's a bit more correct and a bit more interesting actually. Before I begin, I just want to say thank you to everyone who disagreed with me in the comments but did so in a civil way. I love having a great discussion and I had a load of them in those comments so thank you very much. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more TV and film analysis from me Anthony James. I upload a new video every Thursday that could be anything from a dark theory to a review of a TV show or a film that I've seen. Or it could even be a news show where I talk about new things coming up. On a Monday, I've got a podcast with my friend Conrad, in which we go through Dark one episode at a time. He's never seen it before, so we get to hear all his thoughts, his feelings, and also his theories. He's already got some stuff right, he's got a lot wrong. Come and check it out, it's really good fun. Okay, to start off with, I'm going to reference a discussion that I had in the comments section. However, I was going to credit the user, but when I went back to the comments, they seem to have deleted the post. Or I'm just being really silly and can't find it. So whoever that user was, I can't remember the username, I'm sure I'd remember it if I was told it though. So whoever that was, if you comment on this video saying that was me, I'll pin your comment to the top. Just so everyone knows you get the credit for sort of spawning this in me, alright? Alright, so, we were talking about the idea of cycles and loops. So the user didn't agree with the use of the word loop and cycle in the show, because they didn't believe that there was actually a time loop happening. Now, I fully agree on this point. There isn't a time loop happening. The time is linear, both in Adam's world and in Eva's world. It is linear. However, the events that are occurring, i.e. characters going back in the past and fathering or mothering new children that then have an effect on the future, so the, the past having an effect on the future, that can be viewed as a cycle. The example I gave in the discussion was, Mikkel gets taken back to 1986 by Jonas. Mikkel then grows up to be Michael, who's Jonas's father. So Jonas couldn't have taken him back if he wasn't born. Which is a paradox, it's a bootstrap paradox. And those paradoxes, which are all over the show, they are what we are referring to as a cycle or a loop. It's not the actual time. The time is a linear line that then has characters and events happening which cause these loops of circumstances, so to speak. And that's the knot that's talked about in the show. Now, the user believed that when they talked about it in the show, they were referencing a loop in time. I disagree with that. I can see where they're coming from. Um, and in that case, it would be incorrect. And that would be a big problem on behalf of the show. But I think it's a loop and cycle of these events. Also, perhaps I've accidentally contributed to the whole idea of a time loop rather than loops of events through the way that I depicted the timelines in my previous video. I know that I put it into the figure of eight, but I... I did that to represent the events, not really the time. The time is linear. So just to clear up any confusion that I may have caused, let me explain it again using a different graphic this time. So even though Adam's world and Eva's world can be viewed as a linear line, that's what they are. In terms of time, they are a linear line. They're also kind of wrapping around each other in a spiral because they're con continually connected to each other. So using this symbolism, let me explain the events that happened in the show using a new diagram. So in 1971, H.G. Tannhaus' family died in a car crash. He then spent 15 years creating a time machine, or a machine that alters time, which exploded his world and then created two new worlds, Adam's world and Eva's world. And I'm going to display it like this with the interwrapping timelines. Now, if you watched my last video, you know that I think 
that actually the machine did exactly what HG Townhouse had programmed it to. He put in a command to save his family. I don't know how he would have put that command in. Who knows? I didn't invent the machine. He did. But he obviously put something in. He didn't just make it and turn it on. He's not an idiot. Although maybe maybe a lot of you think he is. But oh well. So he put in that he wants his family saved. Then time did what it needed to do to do that. So the way it eventually happened was... Claudia split her timeline, much like Jonas and Marta had split theirs previously in the story. One of her copies travelled back in time to the 50s to get killed by Noah, and the other copy went into the future to talk to Adam. Adam then went and got Jonas, and told Jonas that he has to go and do this, and then Jonas got Marta, and then they travelled into the origin world together, back to 1971, stopped the car crash, we all know what happened, Everything faded away. What a wonderful world. Now, here's the point of contention that I want to address. Was there infinite cycles where Claudia learned a little bit more each time? Up until about five days ago, I would have said, yeah. I like the idea of her continually learning, continually learning. Someone even in the comments said it was like machine learning. That made a lot of sense to me. Until I realized something. Time and time again in my videos, I have people yelling at me in the comments, there's only one cycle. It only happened once. Claudia always figures it out. There's no infinite cycles. It only happened once. Now, this really, really didn't sit well with me. For one reason it didn't sit well with me was because Claudia herself says to Adam that it happened infinity times or a load of times. She wouldn't say that. Now, she's positioned as the smartest character in the show. What What is the point of having her accidentally get something wrong or communicate an error in the last episode. I don't think that they would have done that. I think the show creators do intend us to understand it to be infinite numbers of cycles. So this one cycle idea from the comments that keep people keep telling me never actually connected with my brain because I did I couldn't see a way that that was true based on what the creators have shown us. However, I do know now. I figured it out in my own brain how it could work that way. So strap in, because this is going to be my most technical explanation yet, but hopefully, hopefully, you go with me on it. My explanation starts with a simple question. How many sides does a circle have? Now most people, especially primary school children, would think this is an easy question. Clearly it's one side, but it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. I'm going to let the fundamental science explain it. Okay, I'm only joking. That's clearly a very complicated explanation. However, even though he looks so proud of himself, I'm going to have to kick him to the curb. So let's start off with the assumption that a circle has one side. We then can see that a triangle has three, a square has four, a pentagon has five, a hexagon has six. Now, as we go up through the shapes here and add more sides each time, you can see that as the number of sides grows, the shapes start to look more round. Now, if we were able to go to infinity sides, then we would just have a circle. So therefore, we can view a circle as having one side or infinity sides. It's my belief that this is what the creators were going for. There's both one cycle and infinity cycles. Now, let me explain. In order to avoid confusion, I'm going to keep the timelines on the screen the whole time and the cycle or circle that I'm showing is going to just signify the cycle of events, i.e. the big incestuous knot that we're all thinking of. Now, I've been thinking about the fact that Claudia split her timeline. Now, I've reflected upon timelines being split in my explained video way back whenever season three was first released. However, I never actually understood or even contemplated the ramifications of Claudia splitting her timeline. So obviously when she split her timeline and then went and actually sort of solved the puzzle and then was able to bring an end to this knot and bring an end to these two worlds that were created and save HG Townhouse's family, a lot of people, including me, thought that she must have been passing information down to herself each cycle because how did she finally figure out after infinity cycles? Well, I think I'm close to the explanation and it can be helped by thinking about like this. When you split your timeline, you're kind of branching off your world. Now, you're not creating a brand new world, but it can be viewed like that. It's kind of the same as viewing it as a new world, even if it's only a branch off a world. So whenever Jonas's timeline was split, whenever Marta saved him or he got to the basement, 
You could view that like the universe being split. One universe where Jonas became Adam and one universe where he got killed by Marta. So I'm going to view Claudia's timeline split in the same way. When she split off and then went to talk to Adam, the other version of Claudia went and continued the cycle. She went and got killed by Noah, which then allowed Noah to get the final pages, which helped to keep the cycle going. So we kind of have two universes or two worlds, well, two timelines anyway, where one of them has the full complete cycle, unbroken. It still exists. She needed to make sure that the cycle was unbroken and still exists so that she could be in the position she's currently in so that she could go on to save Regina. If the cycle just didn't exist and she just deviated from the plan, i.e. had free will, then that wouldn't be able to happen. Okay, If she had just stopped working at the cycle, then that would be a paradox and the whole past and future wouldn't match up and everything just wouldn't work. So she needed to ensure that there was a universe or a timeline in which the cycle continues to move around and continues to exist. So now you're asking, well, where does the one and infinity sides of a circle come in? Well, here we go. In the timeline or world where Claudia goes and talks to Adam, that only happens once. But in the other world where the cycle exists and the cycle is going on and on and on, that actually can be viewed as infinity times. And the reason for that is because a circle has no beginning and no end. If you take my Jonas and Mikkel example from earlier in the video, where's the start and the end of that loop? Where's the start and the end of that paradox? There isn't any. So because there's no start and there's no end, you can't just say it happened one time. You can't say it happened two times. You actually don't know. It's, it happened infinite times. It kept going around and around and around. And this can be said for every paradox and actually the cycle as a whole. So the cycle as a whole in that timeline or world where Claudia kept it going, that actually happens infinite times. So here's the question I hear you yelling at me. But if it happens infinite times, then surely Claudia figures it out infinite times, which doesn't match her saying it happens for the first time in the final episode. Now, this is more difficult to explain, but I'm going to do my best job. I understand it in my own head. Whether I can communicate that to you is another thing. It does take a leap into the theoretical, which can be hard to wrap your mind around if you're not used to thinking in that space. I myself have a maths degree, so I'm used to thinking in theoretical spaces. So just bear with me while I explain this. There only exists one Claudia who goes and talks to Adam. Every time the cycle goes around in that world or universe or timeline where the cycle is complete, every time Claudia splits her timeline, she turns into the same Claudia. So those timelines match up. So every time the cycle goes around, it splits off into the same timeline. So you're going from a place which has sort of an infinite number of loops, infinite number of cycles, and then branching off into the same timeline each time. So that is really hard to get your head around because in one of the timelines, these events are happening infinite times. They keep cycling around these events. There's no beginning, there's no end. But every time it gets to the point in the cycle where Claudia splits off, she splits off into the same version of Claudia. So it's kind of like the same one every time. So when we see Claudia talking to Adam, we're actually seeing the result of every cycle. So every time she does split it, infinite Claudias have split themselves. But when they split, the one that goes to talk to Adam is always created. So whether you want to view this as literally infinity Claudias turning into one Claudia, or if you want to view it as the idea of it being an infinite number of times is more theoretical because if there's no beginning and there's no end, then it must be infinity. That's up to you. If you can't get your head around this at all, maybe I'm not explaining it right. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't know. But I am kind of think I'm getting closer to what the writers were intending. Now, obviously, a lot of these questions that we're trying to answer here don't actually have an answer. Maybe they were intended to be sort of nebulous and open-ended so that we could interpret it, or even just that it would be more focused for the story going into the end. Having said that, I do believe I've hit on something that is possible in a theoretical realm. So if you followed me on it, let me know what you think. Do you think I'm anywhere near? Do you think that it's all a bunch of nonsense that I should just stop trying to analyze dark? Let me know. Whatever you think, fair enough.
So just to make this video complete, let me conclude by running through in about a minute what my overall theory is at this moment then. I'm sure it'll change in the future, as it has in the last week, but this is my theory right now. Origin HG Townhouse's family died in a car crash. He wanted to bring them back. 15 years later, he created a time machine and turned it on. That destroyed his world and created two new worlds, Adam's world and Eva's world. These worlds are interconnected through different characters and objects being passed through. The past, present and futures of these worlds are reliant on each other. Within these worlds, there's a big cycle of events which leads to the future and the past being reliant on one another. So the future has to happen for the past to happen and vice versa. This happens across both of these worlds. The fact that the origin world exists or existed is unknown to everyone, except for Claudia, who figures out that there was an origin world because her daughter Regina wasn't caught up in the whole incestuous cycle of events. Now Claudia splits herself and is able to, in one timeline, keep the cycle going, and in another timeline, she's able to set about a plan to fix things. The cycle timeline happens infinite number of times, and the one where she goes to Adam only happens once where every time the cycle gets around to that point, she splits off into the same Claudia. So, she then sends Adam to get Jonas and Marta, who go back into the origin world and travel back to 1971, and there they save H.G. Tannhaus' family, which destroys their world, they fade away in lovely glowing lights, and then the timeline continues on, and the origin world, or the new origin world, is there. Just to clarify as well, I still believe that when Origin HG Tenhouse turned on the machine, everything that we saw in the other worlds was all predetermined to happen. Now obviously this is going to spark debate. I said in my last video that I really wanted Claudia to have free will and I sort of believe that she did because I just, I just want to believe. Having said that, the creators have given us a discussion and a debate which is actually true to real life as well. Are we choosing our own actions or are they predetermined for us? That's a big debate in real life and I think they're mirroring that in the show with not giving us an answer there. Well, there we go. That's where I'm up to with my understanding of the show. I'm sure it's going to change. I'm sure it's going to evolve. I'll keep you updated if it does. But apart from that, if you want to subscribe to the channel, I release a new video every Thursday, as well as a podcast every Monday, in which my friend Conrad goes through dark episode by episode. Some of his theories are absolutely crazy. You don't want to miss them. Check it out. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next cycle.